This problem is based on an experiment that I do in the lab every year. And down here we have a hollow plastic tube. We've run a string through it, and we're going to hook a one kilogram mass on one end. And then we're whirling around a rubber stopper on the other end um, to the point that that whirling of the rubber stopper is able to hold up this hanging mass against gravity. And the unknown that we're trying to solve for here is actually the mass of the rubber stopper. And then, of course, at the end, we test it by putting the stopper on a scale, and hopefully the percent error is pretty small. So I just wanted to sort of extract a, a couple things here out of the paragraph. I have a radius of curvature, 0.88 meters. And then we've measured, because this is a real practical way to do things, 47 revolutions in 10 seconds. Um, I know that the, the formula for centripetal acceleration can be phrased in terms of the period. So maybe that's what I'll start by doing, is just figuring out what's the period of revolution. And period means the seconds per revolution. So I'm going to set it up as 10 seconds over 47 revolutions and just reduce that number to a decimal and I've got my period. And I'll keep a few sig figs on this. 0 0.213 seconds for that. And then I'll start thinking about force diagrams and all that. Have gravity pulling down on the one kilogram mass. And mg is going to be one kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared, which gives me 9.8 newtons. And there's a force pulling up, which is why this thing isn't falling. And that's the tension. And this is a case where the tension is known because I have a completely static mass down here at the bottom. That must balance the force of gravity exactly. So that's 9.8 newtons. And then one of the key assumptions of the experiment is that there's not too much friction going on at this bend in the string. Uh, that's partly why I choose um, why I chose this large mass down here and this small mass up here because it got us to high enough speeds where it started to make the friction actually not matter as much. Um, and if that's true, then the tension in the string here should be equal to the tension on the other side. So that's going to be 9.8 newtons. Okay, and this mass is in uniform circular motion. Oh, I should mention briefly that I set up here. We're going fast enough that the path is very nearly horizontal. So any real experiment like this, you've got to have a little bit of sag in the string because this tension has to have an upward component to hold up the mass against gravity. We're going so fast that it actually causes almost no error at all to just ignore that subtlety. So I have a centripetal acceleration. And I'm going to call that the positive direction for the analysis. And then it looks to me like um, maybe if I write down just one more thing to get ready, we're just about ready to apply Newton's second law. So the formula I remember best for centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. But I could write V as distance over time, one circumference covered every time one period goes by. And maybe you have this formula memorized, um, or maybe you have to just sketch the derivation when you need it. One of the R's cancels, and I get centripetal acceleration in terms of period, which is frequently useful. All right, let's do our Newton's second law analysis on the mass in the horizontal direction. Again, we're just ignoring what's happening vertically. It's a reasonable approximation. So I go F net equals MA. And there's only one force pointing on this guy. It's the tension pointing towards the center of curvature. And that's equal to M times 4 pi squared R over T squared. 
And so I just realized it's unwise to use a T for the tension because we're using T for period. So I have a choice. I could change period to a P maybe, or maybe what I'll do is change my tension to an F sub T. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and solve for the mass of that little rubber stopper, and I end up with M equals FT times period squared, all divided by 4 pi times the radius of curvature, and I'm ready to plug things in. I have 9.8 newtons for the tension. I have 0 0.213 seconds for the period. and my radius of curvature was 0.88 and I get 0 0.0128 kilograms for the mass. It's probably more appropriate to express in grams, so that's 12.8. So hopefully when you walk over to the scale and put it on the scale, you get something close to 12.8 grams.